Go ahead, Kelly. Turn the music up a little bit. We walked back down the hill. The air felt lighter again. Yet there was something that still weighed heavily in my heart. It was a dreary and lonely feeling. I wasn't sure what it was. I got back onto Sam's bike and hid my face behind her back. I didn't want her to see my teary-eyed face. My mother had always said that it was ugly to cry. I took her words to heart. Even from a young age, I never liked to cry in front of others. And at this moment, I especially did not want Sam to see me crying like this. But I couldn't help it this time. The tears kept trickling out of my eyes. I haven't cried in so long. I guess my tear ducts felt it was due time to just let it all out. Sam didn't say anything, though I'm sure she must have felt the patch of wet tears soaking through the clothes on her back. She started up her bike and we rode onwards. I had to collect myself. There was no reason for me to feel sad or upset. I didn't come here with Sam to feel sentimental. I cried so much. I should eat something to restore my salt balance. I'll eat something quickly with her and have her take me home. That was the plan. Tepid water is not going to do that for me. I kind of thought you crying in the first place. Uh, we went to her mother's grave. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> It was a short ride to the seaside fishing town of Sai Kung. Sam parked her bike near the ocean promenade. We stepped off to the backdrop of shimmering ocean waves, and we took a leisurely stroll along the water. There were people lining up to buy fresh seafood from the fishmongers docked at the piers. The area was bustling with activity. Everyone seemed to be in a cheery mood today. It felt as if we had gone to a faraway place together. When you're in Saikung, you have to have seafood. Is that so? Of course! Have you been around here often? No, not often. I think the last time I came here was maybe in junior school with my parents. I see, I see. My mother's ancestral home is in a village around here, so I've come around here in the past. The village? Yes. She's of the Hakka descent. Oh. There are a lot of Hakka villages in Saikun, right? Yes. Though many of them sit empty now as more people have moved on to the city. I see. That's too bad. It seems like a peaceful place to be. The changing economy causes people to move. It's not anything new. Migration has always been a part of our... It's a part of survival. Still, it's sad to see an empty village. Culture and identity can live on one way or another, so long as we don't forget our roots. That's true. Where's your ancestral home? My mother is Toishanese and my father is Techu. I don't know how to pronounce these. <laughs> Just do your best. <laughs> we can look it up later. Yeah. I don't know much about my ancestors, clearly. My parents don't like to talk about it. A lot of things were lost after the war and all the things happening then. Shameful to say, I never visited my father's or my mother's village home. I don't even know where it is. I see. That's alright. You shouldn't feel as Their legacy lives on through you. 
You're a beautiful combination of their heritage. You know, my mother wasn't very much of a traditionalist. I can't say I'm really close to her side of the family. He's doing that cutting out thing again, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it seems to happen to all of us. Is that so? Yes. She left the village when she was young and found work in a theater Hakka women have a lot of expectations from their family, so what she did was quite shocking. You could say she was quite modern for her time. It's incredible. I look up to my mother. My father too. They're strong people. Sam. Sorry. Wait, <laughs> I didn't say sorry. Why did I think that? <laughs> My dad's side is too ch So we have something in common, right, Michelle? That's- Ah, uh, there's a place here at Delicious Teochew Oyster Kongi we can try- Eh? You don't like seafood? I don't mind it. Oysters are high in cholesterol. You have to be careful not to eat too much. Oh, but she'll eat the rice that has all the carbs. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. I'll keep that in mind. Why don't we get something to eat? We can take a look around the town after that. We came all the way here. We should make the most out of today. Okay. I only eat rice and drink tepid water. <laughs> <laughs> Sam led me past the pier and into the town. She navigated the small streets with ease. It was a lively summer day. The town streets were busy with people shopping and eating. Would a video store hold its own here? It was a question I asked myself. After a few turns left and right, Sam brought me to a small cedar seafood restaurant quite away from the waterfront. It was already busy, so we were seated at a table outside. The sun was high and bright upon us. It was warm. I felt my own sweat drip down my neck. For the first time this season, I felt that it was truly summer. This restaurant is much beloved by locals. They're known for their fried hissing shrimp. Wait. <laughs> what? 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 Wait. Oh, sorry. Hold on, hold on. I need to I, take hold, a picture. Hold on. <laughs> Please. <laughs> what is... What? That has to be it's typo, a, right? It's, it's, it's the I Taiwan, don't know. No, it's the Taiwanese street food, apparently. I got it. Also known as pissing shrimp in Hong Kong. No. It's it's <laughs> it's mantis shrimp. Like uh -huh. Interesting. <laughs> well, yeah, here we mm -hmm. <laughs> Mantis shrimp. Same thing. <laughs> Isn't that something with even more cholesterol compared to oyster? Well, we're here. It's a place known for their seafood specialty specialties. Why don't we try it? I'd love to have you try some pissing shrimp. <laughs> we're not gonna call it mantis shrimp, babe. Just kidding. <laughs> Have you tried it before? I haven't. Mantis shrimp, you mean? <laughs> I saw that the restaurants by the pier have it too. We didn't have to walk all the way into town then. 
Trust me, it's really good here. All right, try it. Let's order. We sipped on iced tea while waiting. I noticed that people seem more relaxed here. I saw some people sitting outside, simply enjoying a cool drink in the shade. Things moved slower than in the city. It didn't take long for food to come out, though. I was about to take a bite when I felt something wet touch my leg. What? Something touched my leg! Sam! What? Uh-huh. Oh, it's just a cat. Hey, little kitty. Are you hungry? Do you want some pissing shrimp? Meow meow. Come here. <laughs> Why is it wet? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's Yuki. <laughs> a calico cat was sitting underneath the table. Sam was petting the cat casually without concern. Don't touch it. Why not? You stray. Well. Wow. Uh, so what? Wow, you're so friendly. Come on, reach out your hand. My fam was like that. They're like, don't. Stray animals, you don't know what diseases they have. <laughs> Why? It's like, okay, I'll just, I'll just wash my hands after. Like. <laughs> she wants your attention. Don't be mean to her. All right, all right. What should I do? Pet her? Yes, scratch her cheeks. I'm an alien, apparently. Okay. <laughs> oh, she's purring. So tepid water, afraid of stray animals, afraid of cholesterol. <laughs> she's rubbing against me. Keep petting her. Ah. Uh, she's kind of cute. Why don't you give her a piece of shrimp? Do it! Feed it! <laughs> feed okay. it! It can have a piece of pissing shrimp. <laughs> feed the Manipulation success! <laughs> I fed the cat a piece of shrimp. The cat took the piece of shrimp in its mouth and then scurried off. I so. knew it! <laughs> <laughs> Aww. She ran away. It's like that sometimes. Had appealed to my emotions and manipulated <laughs> it for her benefit. Yes. What's that? Don't be sad. She'll come and play with you again. I'm not sad. Aw, don't mind. Let's eat while the food is still hot. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't get over the name of the dish. <laughs> I'm just imagining you're saying, like, come on, eat the pissing shrimp before it gets too pissy. <laughs> or something. We learned uh, something new. <laughs> yes. How is the food? It's delicious. Alright. Oh, here comes the fish. Eh? That's a whole steamed fish. How many dishes did you order? Uh, five? That's way too much for the two of us. You said you never really ate seafood here before. Don't worry, it's on me. I want you to try it. The, the cholesterol. <laughs> hmm. That's a lot of calories. Dilute it with the rice. That's not <laughs> That's not how it works. But we feed the leftover to the stray cats. No. Don't lure them to me. I'm just kidding. Let's just enjoy the meal. We can worry about the leftovers later. Okay. 
somehow we were able to finish the meal. We walked slowly back to the waterfront. We ate so much, my waistband felt tight. Sam yawned and casually stretched her arms into the air. The warm sun made me feel sleepy. I refrained from yawning and crossed my arms. I had to keep up appearances in front of Sam. Sam was taking it too easy, I felt. Couldn't she notice the tension I had with her? I had a clear agenda. I wanted my blouse back. I had intended to let Sam know today that I wasn't going to see her again. There was no longer any reason to see her once I got back my blouse. But after this and that, I had ended up spending nearly half the day with her. Once we arrived back at the pier, I planned to have her take me home. I didn't forget that Sam had suddenly kissed me the other day. I didn't understand how Sam could act so cool and nonchalant about it. She was kind and friendly, and she smiled at me no differently than before. Did she not feel affected by it? We made one final visit to the pier. We leaned against the metal railings and watched the boats come and go. There was a slowness in today. The sun was still high up in the sky. But even the fishermen had to eventually pack up for the day. We started our walk back to where Sam had parked her bike. It's about time for me to confront Sam. Would you like to head back now? Or is there something else you want to see? I... I want to go. I was going to say it when a sign had caught my eye. What's the sign about? Stargazing and summer camping tour. What's that? Ah. Uh, there's a few camping sites around here. You can see the stars quite clearly. Really? This close to Hong Kong? Yep. Just over the other side of the mountains. On a good night, you can see the whole Milky Way. It's absolutely beautiful. I've seen it only a few times. It's really an unforgivable sight. Unforgettable? Oh my god. Sorry. Really? No way. I don't believe you. We're still so close to the city. Can you really see it with all the city lights nearby? You can! Are you interested in seeing it? I've never seen the constellations before with my own eyes. Growing up in the city, it's hard to see much in the sky besides buildings and towers. There's always the planetarium. It's not really the same. All right, why don't we go have a look? Huh? I can't. It's too far. It's not that far away. Just a little hike. I'm not dressed for hiking. And I didn't prepare anything for it. Don't worry, it's an easy walk. Let me buy some snacks and drinks from the corner mart and we can go. I don't think I should. I wanted Sam to tell me her intentions. I didn't want to talk about it, but I couldn't leave such a big issue hanging between us. I wanted to know more than anything what she thought about it. I wish I could say this to Sam, but I couldn't spit out the words. The other night, I was too forward. I apologize. I understand. I get it if you feel uncomfortable around me. Sam. I still want to be with you more. Talk to you more. And learn more about you. It doesn't have to be today. It can be another time. Would that be alright with you?
For a moment, I sensed that there was a vulnerability in Sam. I didn't know how she could always read what I was thinking. Sam seemed sincere. It wasn't anything to look at the stars with someone. I doubted that the stars could be seen like that so easily. I was curious. I've lived here all my life, and I never heard about any stargazing here. A part of me wanted to prove her wrong. Won't we be out too late if we have to wait for the stars? The sun sets around at 8pm. How does that work for you? Then it's alright. As long as it's not too far and not too late, okay? Okay. We got back on Sam's bike, and she took the road that led further into the country. The road became less and less paved and more and more rocky as we went. She stopped at what appeared to be a trailhead for a hiking path into the mountains. We can't take the bike any further, but it's not too far of a walk from here. Are you comfortable in your shoes? I'm fine. Okay. It's just a bit f Hmm. We walked on a dirt path that cuts through the mountain. It was the height of summer. The chirping of the birds was loud. As I walked, dirt got into my shoes. Walking itself wasn't uncomfortable. The rocky path made scratches and marks on the white leather of my shoes. Oh well, it was nothing to be upset about. I looked at Sam. She still wore her thick jean jacket. She was sweating quite profusely. Oh, there, she does it again. She was wiping the sweat off her brow with her hands. It was a bad habit to have. Dirt and dead skin from her hands could clog and enlarge her facial pores. People with good skin should cherish it. I passed my handkerchief to Sam. She passed it back without using it. Suit yourself. I wiped my own sweat from my neck. We kept walking and walking. I wasn't exactly sure where Sam was taking us. There was no view other than shrubs and trees. The trail eventually took us through the woods and onto the grassy mountain hills. There was an incline in our walk. Thankfully, it didn't take long to reach the plateau. I saw nestled below the foothills was a secluded ocean cove. There was a stone path ahead leading down to the beach. I felt the salty sea breeze from the top of the hill. It was pleasant. The sky appeared much bluer and wider here. It seemed as if the horizon stretched into eternity. I stared into the endless blue. My head was spinning. The height made me feel dizzy. Sam tapped lightly on my shoulder. I might have been swallowed up by the sky had Sam not been so grounded on her feet. Drink some water. We're just about there. You'll feel better in the shade below. Okay. We descended down the stone steps. We had finally arrived at our destination. We made it! Ah, I'm so sweaty. I'm just gonna use my hands again. I hate humidity. How are you making out? Tired? I'm good. I can't believe you hardly broke a sweat. Are you even human? No. I perspire normally, I think. Who talks like that? I'm just kidding. <laughs> really, really. Is that so? I'm gonna help myself to the soft drinks. Which one would you like? I'll have the same one you're having. Coke, then? Okay. B 
beautiful here. Yes. I'm surprised not a lot of people are here. We're at a secret spot. I used to come here and to some of the beaches further out with my family. We used to say past sunset and make bonfires. Is that so? Yep. I never did such a recreational thing with my family. It's pretty fun. What kind of things did you do on the beach with them? Lots of things. We ate snacks, played cards, swam, fished. And of course, watch the stars. It's too bad we don't have a tent today. We could sleep outside with it. You know, the crabs come out at night and pinch you all over if you fall asleep on the beach. That... really? That sounds exciting in its own way. Not really. It hurts. Let's make a spot for ourselves in the shade over there. I'm about to burn up in the sun. Ah, wait, Sam. Mm hmm? What is it? A cool pack. I got it from the convenience store earlier. For me? Yes. I'll put it on the back of your neck. Oh. Is it okay if I touch your hair? Go ahead. I don't mind. Thank you. It feels nice. Your skin is quite red now. It's going to peel if you let it burn like this. You need to take care of yourself more, you know? You must be hot in your jacket. Michelle? Sam, could you take it off? Huh? There's people around, though. What? I mean, for the bug spray. I got it at the convenience store, too. I'll spray it on you. Oh. It's okay. You can use it for yourself. I don't need it. You don't need it? In this subtropical climate? I'll take my chances. I don't like the sticky feeling of bug spray. I rarely get mosquito bites anyway. So you're one of those people. Well, don't ask for my no pico if you get bit. Your no pico? This itch cream. I always have it with me. Just in case. You never know with mosquito and bug bites. Oh, Michelle, you're really prepared for it. I always get a bad reaction from mosquito bites. It's for my own sake. I didn't bring it specifically for today. I mean, you're the one who should be more prepared. You don't even think about putting on bug repellent when we're outside for so long. Okay, I'll put it on. I wouldn't want to attract any more bugs to us. Could I bother you to apply it on me? Sure. I can help spray your back too. I'm fine for now. I already sprayed myself earlier. Maybe in a couple hours. I got the concentrated spray, but it says to apply every five hours. Really? Does that mean I have to spray it again later? Of course. I'm gonna set my watch right now. Let's not forget about the sunscreen, too. She's totally the type to do that, too. Huh? Don't tell me you didn't apply sunscreen. I forgot. 
Well, I have some in my bag if you want to borrow it too. When it's 30 SPF, you have to apply every two hours. That's amazing, Michelle. Is it? Your bag is like Dory Meow's magic pocket. <sighs> we found a little spot for us to sit in the shade. The sea breeze was cool and the sand was warm under our feet. We positioned ourselves to look out towards the sea. The water was such a beautiful azure blue today. The sound of the ocean waves and rustling leaves was soothing to my ears. I could sit here and look at this for 10,000 years, I thought. So I did. We ate up our convenient store snacks during the time we were waiting. I had let Sam pick and choose the snacks as it was her idea to begin with. Sam liked crunchy and spicy snacks like flavored chips and shrimp crackers. I like chewy and savory snacks like jerky and biscuits with, feel with filling. I noticed more and more that we weren't compatible in any sense. But despite all this, we had passed the entire day together without the strain or tension that I had expected. We could make light conversation or just quietly admire the view. It didn't really seem to matter to us. Whatever we did, the sun eventually made its way down the horizon. Time passed by at a paradoxical rate whenever I was with Sam. It would be neither too fast nor too slow. It always moved at its own pace, never as intended. I had almost failed to notice when the sky turned a vivid pink at sunset. Despite the troubles that I had within my heart, I could not deny that the sunset tonight was simply sublime. Sam? What is it? I forgot to mention. I watched that movie I got from you the other day. Oh, how did you find it? It's interesting. It's different from other movies I've watched. I see. Did you like it? I liked it. I'm glad. It's a pretty heavy movie to watch, I have to say. Yes, it was cruel that it had to end like that. Yes, it was a sad end. And it's even more terrible to know that the real actress experienced something similar in her life and was met with her own tragedy. Really? That's so sad. And it makes me angry. Why wasn't more done to protect her? How could such a thing happen even after making such a film? It was a horrific thing. But we can't speak on her behalf or for her experiences. What happened to her is not something we could ever fully understand. It's not always a matter of strength and mental resolve. I know. That's why we have to be sensitive and empathetic even when others can't. And we have to be hopeful. I'd like to think things are a little better now than they were then. Ruan left a spectacular legacy. But we can't forget her tragedy. The messages of the film still apply to today's society. It's not easy to change people's perceptions. I think so. But thinking like that is so sad. Is it? I don't know. I mean, it's better now, right? It's not like in the past where women couldn't go to school and work. It might have been difficult in the 1930s. But it shouldn't be so hard to live freely anymore, right? I think... That's something only you can answer. That's... 
This conversation got quite serious, didn't it? No. I wanted to ask you about it, too. I see. I've been thinking about the messages in these old films. I watch them so detached from the people who made them. How could they feel like they... How would they feel if they knew people 50 years later would still be watching them and discussing them? We see a beautiful face. But we'll never really know what was happening behind the screen. Are we respecting Ruan by keeping her films and watching them? Even if those films might have been produced during the most painful moments of her life? I, I don't know. That's a hard question to answer. I don't know the answer to it. That's okay. Perhaps there's no right answer. That's right. I think you're a thoughtful person, Sam. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with me. You really think so? Did it not go through? Uh, I heard. Okay. <laughs> I was afraid I gave you the wrong impression. No. I really appreciate you coming out with me today. Fine. I didn't have much planned today anyway. I'm happy to see the stars with you. It's nice that we can talk, frankly. I enjoy spending time with you like this. sun should be setting soon. Will we really see the stars from here? Yes, just wait patiently. The sun had finally begun to dip beneath the horizon. As it grew darker, stars started filling the sky, appearing one after another. What's that one? It's such a bright star. That one is called Vega. Vega? It's one of the stars that formed the Summer Triangle. You see the other two stars there? So that's Vega, and that's Altair with Denib over there. Oh. I see it. I know of that story. The star-crossed lovers, the cowherd, and the weaver girl. That reminds me, the Seven Sisters Festival is in August sometime, right? That's right. This year it's on August 12th. Really? People celebrate the Western Valentine's Day nowadays. I never really know the date of the festival. I understand. It's nice to be on the receiving end for chocolates and flowers. Nowadays, I suppose it isn't so pertinent to be praying to the gods for a good husband and a fertile marriage. <laughs> Tell that to my mother. She's worried that I'll become a spinster if I don't try harder to get married. But I'm sure she'll have even more complaints once I start dating. She's thinking of your best interest, I'm sure. Romance shouldn't be taken lightheartedly. I know. My dad is still holding out to the thought that I would get married someday. Is that so? Do you not plan on getting married? Well, even if I find the right person, I'm not sure I can. I see. How about you, Michelle? Yeah? 
I haven't thought about it yet. My mother has a lot of expectations on what kind of person I should marry. He has to be older, wealthier, taller. He should have a prominent chin and a square forehead. His lips shouldn't be too big and his eyebrows shouldn't be too thin. She really cares about the feng shui of someone's face. Wow, my mom. I don't know why she even believes in such things. That's quite a laundry list. And I match none of them. You're a wonderful person, Michelle. I'm sure you won't have trouble finding someone like that. You'd make a beautiful bride someday. I don't have the time right now to care for that. I'm so busy with work. I see. Well, if you ever feel you need a little spiritual help, there's a temple in New Territories that's dedicated to the Seven Sister Deities. It's not too far from here. It's one of the few temples that still celebrate the festival. If you pray there, you'll be guaranteed to find love. Really? I don't really believe in that superstitious stuff. And I think such prayers aren't necessary these days. There's more to life than getting married. Career and personal growth is important too. You think so? You're such a modern woman, Michelle. Well, there's already so much to do. You know, I heard from someone that if you leave a big, if you leave a bag of toy, toiletries as an offering at the day of the festival, you'll be granted smooth and unblemished skin for the rest of your life. What? I don't believe that. When did these legends get so specific? Wasn't it supposed to be needlework and fruit offerings? You made that one up, didn't you? Hmm? My beautiful skin can attest. Uh-huh. I don't believe you. You can go to the temple on the day of the festival and see for yourself. I don't want to. For something so trivial, there's no need to bother the gods about it. Trivial, huh? My Michelle, you must be popular. No. I mean... I agree with what you mean. You have to take matters of love into your own hands. You can't be afraid to fall in love first. You'll get hurt if you think that way. It's better than waiting or giving up on it entirely. You're brave. I'm not sure if I can do the same. I wouldn't say that I'm brave. I just want to be myself. That's all. I think you're a brave person, Michelle. When you speak your mind, I find it quite attractive. Uh, don't be flustered. I mean it. Please be honest with me. Sam. I... <clears throat> what about that big bright star over there? Do you know what that one is? Oh, that one? I think it's Antares, the heart of the scorpion. Terry, the heart of the scorpion. You seem to know a lot about this. I 
like astronomy and astrology. Is that so? Astrology, like star signs? Yeah. What's your sign? I don't know. What does it go by? Date of birth. I see. Tell me. What? Your birthday. Why? So I can tell you your sign. I don't believe in those things. It's harmless fun. I'm not gonna steal your identity or anything with it. Hmm. All right. It's February 16th. Oh, you're an Aquarius. You're almost a Pisces, which are basically wet blankets who drink tepid water. <laughs> Nothing against Pisces. It's just oh, when you look at astrology signs, always Pisces that get shit all over. Did you bring me out here to kill me and take my identity? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Makes sense. Huh? What's your sign, then? Capricorn. They're highly compatible with Aquarius signs. Is that so? No, I made that up just now. Compatibility is all about how you try to understand each other, don't you think? Of course. I didn't think for a second that star signs mattered. <laughs> but you never know. What? Alright, how about your lunar zodiac sign? What is it? Tell me, please. Rabbit. Oh! Next year will be your year, then. You'll be turning either 24 or 36. You're reaching a big milestone. There'll be challenges in the coming year for you. My mom had an astrology book, and it actually told you that one way to sneakily ask somebody their age is to ask them their zodiac sign, because it's you know, within 12 years, yeah. so it's pretty easy to guess the decade. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. That's why I didn't want to tell you. So you're 35 then? I thought you would be younger than me. I'm 23. Hmm. <laughs> it's your Zodiac. Uh... I'm older than you. That's all you have to know. Wow, she wouldn't even tell her how much older she is. I what? want to know. Okay. I was born in the year of the dog. Dog? Ooh. I know that's like... Rat, ox, tiger, rabbit, dragon, dog? Then you're... 33? I think your zodiac order is not quite right. Huh? I'll look it up later. <laughs> You're so cute, Michelle. Alright, I'll tell you. My age is not a secret. I'm 27. Oh. Oh? What do you mean, oh? Uh, hmm. I mean, it, I, I thought you would be this age. Yeah. That's also what I thought. If she gave yeah, off like 26, 27. It appropriate. <laughs> I thought you would be this age. Didn't she comment that she thought Sam was older anyways? Near the beginning? She did. I think so. Odd. Really? You're mature and knowledgeable on a lot of things. So you thought I would be 23? <laughs> You're also open-minded and adventurous. I like that about you. Michelle?
Will we really be able to see the Milky Way from here? It depends. Sometimes it's quite visible, but other times we might have to wait till midnight for it to be dark enough to see. I see. Do you want to head back now? You mentioned you had to go by nightfall. Not yet. It's fine. Can I stay out a little longer with you? Is that okay? Okay. The whole day had passed and Sam hadn't brought up the issue of our relationship. I couldn't bring myself to ask Sam directly about it. Doing that would mean I had to confront my own feelings towards Sam. Sam was once again stoic behind a smile. I couldn't guess what she was feeling. It was as if the clock had been reset to the first day I met Sam. It wasn't bad that it was like this. Still, I knew it wasn't fair to have Sam wait with me for so long just to see the stars. I'm not one to usually have requests, but that night, I really wanted to see it. If I could catch a glimpse of the Milky Way with my own eyes, I felt... I felt that I would know... I would know how small we were as individuals in the universe. And how much smaller the things that concern us must be. I wanted to understand this feeling. I wanted to confirm that it was tangible and real. We waited. And we waited. We waited for the bands of nebula clouds and star clusters to appear in the night sky. But they continued to elude us. I knew they existed regardless of my observation. But I needed to ascertain it with my own eyes. Sometime between dusk and twilight, I drifted into a deep slumber. I dreamed a strange dream. It was a scene that played out in my memory so many times since that day. I was in my high school classroom. It was the first day back to school after summer break. I was chatting with my classmates before the start of afternoon classes. I was about to tell them the story of my summer trip to Taiwan when I was called to step out of the classroom. There had been someone who urgently needed to see me, but instead of it being my mother waiting to see me like it was in my memory, it was Sam in her red dress. She gestured for me to follow her. It was strange, as if I was put in a trance. I followed her out of the school without question. I sat behind Sam on her bike, and she drove it to some distant place in the countryside. We got off the bike, and then we walked and we walked along one of the mountain paths. Day wore on into the night. When we had reached the mountain plateau, Sam suddenly ran ahead of me. I tried to follow. However, I quickly lost sight of her. I did my best to chase after her through the thickets of trees and bushes. I was running blindly, and before I could realize, I slipped and lost my footing. I tumbled down a cliffside. I did not feel pain. In fact, I seemed to be in free fall. It was quite a surreal experience falling in a dark void. I eventually hit a bottom and landed in a pool of water. It seemed to be the ocean. The briny smell was strong. The water felt cold and heavy. I could not see anything. It was so dark. It felt as if I was sinking deeper and deeper into the watery depth. A heavy weight pressed against me. My chest felt tight. I thought I was going to drown. There was a suffocating realness to the stream. I was frightened. I struggled and struggled to swim to the surface. I couldn't fight whatever force that was pulling me down. Everything became black. I must have passed out. When I came to, I 
found that instead of sinking deeper into the water, I found myself floating upwards. It was as if I was drifting towards the celestial plane. I struggled to get myself grounded, but I had no control over my trajectory. I closed my eyes, I felt oddly at peace floating upwards like this. I was resigned to thinking that I would be forever lost in the cosmos, and I heard a voice call out to me. I opened my eyes to find myself afloat in silvery water. The water was cool. It had a clear, transparent quality to it, but I couldn't make out the bottom to its depths. From a distance, I saw the light of a lantern coming towards me. It was a woman I did not know. She wore an orange robe with flowing sleeves. She rowed her small wooden boat towards me. The red lantern perched on the boat illuminated her figure, but her face was quite obscured. I saw that her makeup was an older style, but I could not place the period. The woman gestured for me to get into her boat. I recalled her saying that she could help me find my way back home. Strangely, I didn't hesitate. I didn't feel any ill intent from her. I climbed onto the boat. The woman had me set at the front of the rowboat. She stood on the back and steered the boat. The boat glided along the still water quietly. We seemed to traverse a far distance in the darkness. The only guiding lights were the distant stars above. The woman did not say anything more to me when I was on the boat. The only sound that could be heard was the sound of the oar pushing water. I couldn't make out the woman's expression. She had an air of quiet dignity and an imposing presence. I was afraid to cross her unknowingly. I was scared, but I didn't feel that she was someone harmful. Something about her seemed familiar. I couldn't place why. Though the temperature of the water in our surroundings felt cold, she gave me a warm feeling. The dark night didn't seem so terrifying anymore. The light of the stars above grew brighter as we journeyed onward. The night sky was beautiful. I remember thinking this to myself. Eventually, we neared land. I saw a sandy beach nestled in a mountain cove from a distance. It seemed familiar, like a place from recent memory. As we got closer and closer to land, I saw that there was someone at the shore waiting for me. It had been Sam. She was there waiting for me, all along. As I was about to step off the boat, a woman said something to me. I remember it distinctly. She had a sweet and gentle voice. She sang to me a poem from a song I recall hearing a long time ago. The spring breeze blows, the young swallow's tail make ripples on the water. The little waves dash away the reflection of the lotus flower. Perhaps in still water, the swallow will see her own reflection and take flight towards the new moon. My mind was clouded. I could not understand her words. I turned to face her. She spoke to me again in plain language. Young lady, haven't you realized yet? The summer that you remember had ended long ago. You have to wake up from this dream and take your first step forward. I stepped off the boat and when I looked back, she was already gone. There was no boat, no lantern, there were no traces of the woman. All I saw was the ocean, the beach, and Sam before me. And I woke up from my dream. I had a dream about your mother, it was weird. Michelle? Did you fall asleep? Michelle? It was dark when I woke up. I couldn't make out any lights in the sky or much of anything else before me. 
The sound of the ocean waves told me I was still on the beach. But I couldn't see where Sam was. I felt a cold chill run through my spine. It was unnerving to be alone in the dark like this. Ah! Sam? Where are you? I'm here. I felt her hand on my shoulder. Sam had been next to me the whole time. Are you alright? You look scared. I... I had a strange dream. I was afraid you left. And leave you alone here in the dark? I don't know. Oh. Tired? No. I... I didn't mean to fall asleep. No worries. You weren't out for long. Really? It's so dark now. Huh? Is it still not dark enough? We can't see any more stars now compared to earlier. The clouds had rolled in. Some nights are like that. Oh. Disappointed? No. It's just... It's getting late now. I think we should go. If we stay any longer, we're gonna get eaten alive by mosquitoes. See. We have a bit of a walk to the back. Hold on to my hand, alright? Hmm. Walk from the beach wasn't too far, but I wished in my heart that it was just a bit further. It wasn't that I absolutely had to see the stars. I could go to the planetarium any time to see them if I really wanted to. It was just... Just a bit further. I think I see where the bike is. Michelle? Wait, Sam. What is it? Sam, look up. The clouds opened up a rift in the sky. And we were able to see it. The streaks of spiraling stars and stardust that formed the arms of the Milky Way appeared in the night sky above us. The cluster of starry lights shone brightly for us in this temporal moment. We gazed at it as long as we could. I knew it would only be a short moment. For the clouds would soon cover the sky once again, returning the night to plain darkness. But we saw it. We actually saw it. And it was stunning. I looked over to Sam. She was looking up to the sky. Her eyes were wide in awe. She was smiling from ear to ear. My heart swelled up with an unknown joy. My chest felt tight, as if my heart was going to burst. It was a heavy feeling, a cathartic release of emotions. It was almost frightening. I reached out for Sam's hand in the darkness. She gently squeezed my hand back. I felt reassured that I was here on the same plane with her, and that we were living witnesses of this night. Beautiful. It really is. It's tremendous. To see the stars like this with your own eyes. There's so many more stars in the night sky than I could have imagined. Yes. It was quite a sight. I haven't seen a night sky quite like this before. I'm really glad we got to see it. Thank you for bringing me here. I... 
I had a good time coming here. It'd be nice to see it again. Sam? Michelle? I'll always treasure this moment. Thank you, Sam. Me too. We rode on Sam's back back to the city. Sam's back back to the city. <laughs> uh, okay. On the winding mountain road in the twilight hours of the night. It felt as if we, as if we were the only people in the world. I held tightly onto Sam. Our dust-filled shoes flung out sand into the careless wind. Her hair smelled like the sun and the sea. Our moment together felt like a dream. I wasn't dreaming, though. I was in the real world. Time moved forward without bias, and soon the city lights came into view. I thought the road back was short. Day felt as if it had gone to I had gone to another country with Sam. Had the city always been so close? The city light shone so brightly from the distance, much brighter than the light of stars. The road was smooth. We quickly entered the freeway. The city lights got closer and closer. I could almost grasp the light in my hands. I saw in the distance the city that we call home. It was the city that never sleeps. The city lights always shine so brightly, they never allowed the sky to rest. Even in the midnight hours, the sky was greenish blue from the city lights. It was never pitch black like the way it was when I was on the beach. The city lights were many and bright. They shroud us from seeing the stars that were just above us, but I don't dislike them for that. Each shining light in the city served as beacons to the rest of the universe, saying loudly that we were here. We were here, and we existed in this moment. They were a sign of how many people were out there trying to make their claim to this place we call home. Sam and I were just one of the many. No matter what becomes of us, the city's lights and the stars above will keep on shining. What transpired tonight might ultimately have no effect on the fate of the universe. But it was something significant to me. I held on to Sam more tightly. I felt insecure. Cars and other vehicles sped by us as we entered the urban landscape. Though we were no longer alone on the road, our journey was its own. I could hear the sounds of the city clearly now. There were the sounds of the traffic, the sound of vehicle engines, car horns, the audible crossing signal was unavoidable anywhere in Hong Kong. As we entered the city proper, I could hear the sound of people chatting on the sidewalks and the sound of music playing in the near distance. The city was still bustling at this midnight hour. My heart felt pained. We weren't going as fast anymore on the bike, but... It felt as if we were accelerating out of control towards something too unknown and abstract. It was such a heavy feeling. A part of me wanted to hit the brakes on this. Another part of me wanted to keep going, further and further. Why did I have to feel like this? thought. Sam looked over his shoulder to me at the next traffic stop. I couldn't make out the expression in her eyes. All I saw was my own reflection in her helmet. It was well past midnight, and for the first time, I thought to myself that I didn't want to go home. Where is your home, Michelle? It's by Kowloon City. Okay, I'll drop you off. I can bring your shirt to you another time. That's right. I almost forgot. The pedestrian signal was counting down. 
The light was about to change. Sam took her foot off the road and back on the bike. I felt the forward momentum of the bike slowly inching ahead. Sam tightened her grip on the throttle. I should tell her. Before it was too late to turn back. Sam? You don't have to take me back home. I want to go back with you. Michelle? It had been quite late already. It was much past the time I should have been home. I didn't have any other ulterior motives to be here. I just didn't want to go home yet. I wanted to say this to Sam, but I couldn't find the words to articulate this. I looked over to Sam. She acted cool and casual. As if such a scene had played out before her a hundred times already. I didn't like that. It's been a long day. Want me to put on a movie? If you're hungry, we can get something to eat. There's still a lot of late night eateries open. A midnight snack would be fun. This time I'll make sure that it doesn't have uh, too much cholesterol. There's a wonton noodles. They don't have pissing shrimp here, though. There's dim sum. There is barbecue. And let's not forget about Da Lang. Just name it. Sam, I'm not hungry. Oh. I looked around her place. It was hard to look at Sam in the eye for some reason. I saw a familiar blouse hanging by her bed. Oh, that's right. I almost forgot. Here's your blouse. Sam handed me my blouse. It was neatly pressed. No stain or damage could be found. It's lucky it didn't stain at all, right? Sam looked over to me. Her eyes seemed to search for a response. We had spent the whole day together, yet this was the first time I had looked deeply into her eyes. I couldn't endure her gaze that seemed to look through me. I turned away. I had no words to say. Sam turned her back to me and walked over to the balcony. She opened the door and stepped out. I felt the night air fill her room. Sam seemed to be searching for something in the night sky. I didn't know what. The neon lights outside covered Sam in vivid reds. I stood apart in the blue, dim room. The distance between us was only a room's length. The dividing line was all too apparent. I felt incredibly lonely like this. One moment. Okay. Okay. I'm sure Sam would get more pissing shrimp if she could <laughs> for nighttime snack. I was like looking at the Wikipedia page for that. Yeah, I looked it up too. You can't see a single star. But occasionally you can see airplanes flying in and out of Kaitak. 
There's something about seeing a plane taking off that makes you want to go somewhere. Sometimes when I see a plane in the night sky, I imagine myself sitting on that plane. I'm looking down on the sky, looking down on the city from the window seat of a plane a thousand feet up. The cabin lights turn off, and I lean back, rest assured I'll be somewhere far away after a night's sleep. Do you feel that way sometimes? I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if I shared the same feeling with Sam. I tried to imagine the same scene that Sam had described. That I was up in the air inside an airplane, looking out the window at the city lights below. Where was I going? I didn't have an answer for myself. There wasn't a specific place that came to mind where I wanted to travel. I searched for an answer in my heart. I wanted to go somewhere. It didn't matter so much where. What I wanted was to go somewhere with someone at my side. I stepped towards Sam. What I was searching for wasn't something that could be found outside her window. It wasn't something that could be seen in the sky, either. I reached out towards Sam. I hoped that she could answer me. Michelle. Sam. How do you feel about me? Michelle. Forget it. It's nothing. I... I like you. What do you mean? I would like us to be more than this. More? I don't understand. How could two women... If it's something possible with you... It's... It's impossible. We're both... I just think... Michelle, look at me. Michelle, don't... Don't tell me what you think, but rather how you feel. Feel? I feel... I feel like you're an old friend. That you're easy to talk to, and that you always have something interesting to say. I like that about you. Michelle. What am I to- We kissed last time. Did you feel it to be wrong? Kiss? It... It did. But it didn't. I can't tell you. Then if we kissed again, would it be alright? Sam, I... I don't know. I had a really good day. Michelle, you're a charming person. I want to be with you more. I want to get to know you more. I have a good feeling just from being with you today. I want to go somewhere with you again. And talk with you more. If you don't mind, I want to kiss you again. I want to be someone close to you. I want to hold you and touch you. Sam. 
please. That's too much. You can't. You can't? I... I don't know. I never felt this way before. My heart is pounding so fast. I don't know what to do with it. Michelle. Sam. May I? In the same place where we had shared our first kiss, I found myself again, face to face with Sam. This time, there were hardly any sounds outside to disturb us. Nor were there any smells from a neighbor's cooking to distract us. Even if there was something, I didn't pay it any heed. My attention was to the person before me. It was just the two of us, together again in this lonely hour. My back leaned against the cool glass of the balcony window. Sam's warm body pressed against mine. She deepened her kiss, and I followed. I wanted time to pause and let us be like this for a bit longer. I wanted to take in this moment, slowly, so I wouldn't forget. When I broke free from her kiss, Sam held her arms around me gently. I looked into her eyes. Michelle. I want to show you my feelings. More than this. Sam. Please. Just kissing is already... It's already enough for me. Michelle. Are you scared? I'm... I'm not... Then... Can I kiss you again? Sam... We kissed with passion. I didn't stop, Sam. I couldn't. I couldn't deny that I wanted to understand this feeling that I had with Sam. Even though my logical being said that I should push her away. It shouldn't be like this, I thought. I shouldn't be like this at all. But against all reason, I tightened my embrace. I held Sam closer. I couldn't explain to myself. Why? Why tonight? Of all nights. I could go further with her. Sam. Michelle. I like you so much. Sam. You're beautiful. I want to cherish you. Huh? Sam pushed me under her bed. I feel like Michelle's face looks different in this one. She like, she has like more makeup a, on. Looks like a doll, kind of. Yeah, she has way more makeup on than how she normally looks. The blush, the eyeshadow. I think they're trying to do lighting, but it looks like makeup. Yeah. She took off her shirt and tossed it across the room. Sam pressed her body on top of mine. Her body felt hot. I could taste the salt of our sweat in the air. She smelled of a sweet perfume. I was drunk with Sam's fragrance. Sam kissed me between ragged breaths. It was a heavy feeling. My heart was pounding hard. It felt like it was going to leap out of my chest at any moment. I called out her name. Sam. I arched my back and my fingers gripped tightly on the bed sheets. My lungs burned. It felt like I was going to drown. I needed her to take me away from this overwhelming feeling. Sam slowly moved her kisses down from my lips and onto my neck. 
Sam's kisses were forceful yet soft. She bit and left marks on my neck and shoulder. It hurt, but it didn't hurt as much as my body ached. I didn't notice how quickly Sam undid the buttons of my shirt. Aside from the bra covering my breasts, the chest was bare for her to see. Sam, this is... this is too much. Michelle? Sam, please, I... Can you show me more of yourself? Sam. Sam's hand moved down to my leg. Her fingers stroked against my thigh. She kissed my chest slowly. Her fingers and lips were like ocean waves. It was gentle yet strong. It surged and it retreated. I felt like the moon sinking beneath the sea. I was frightened. I didn't know what would happen if I sank to the watery depths. But I felt safe in her embrace. Her touch gave me comfort. I needed to know beyond this. I needed to know her true feelings toward me. Michelle. Do you want me? Sam. I... I... I do. Good girl. Oh my- I can't believe she fucking said that. <laughs> I don't know, I kind of suspected she might be like this. Sam, I... I need you. Sorry, did it not pick up? No. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I was like, um, why are we... <laughs> oh. I want you to feel my love. Sam teased the area between my legs. She used her fingers to draw circles rhythmically over my skin. I've never been touched like this before. I felt like I was going to burn up. It was embarrassing. My heart was pounding so loudly in my ears. I could feel the pulse and blood pooling between my legs. Her pressure was good. It was steady and warm. Sam kissed the area beneath the breast and continued planting kisses down my abdomen and through my thigh. I felt her teeth gnaw on my leg. She bit me again, now on my inner thigh. This time, the pain was piercing. I let out a cry. Sam! Michelle. Sam, what are you- I want you to feel more than this. Sam lifted up my skirt. And she slowly pulled down my underwear. It stuck to my skin. I felt my body sticky. I felt dirty. I felt bare. Sam. Don't look too much. Michelle. You're so charming. I love your eyes. And the way you look at me. I love your lips. And how you kiss me. I want to cherish you. I want to cherish every part of you. Michelle. Sam. She reached inside me. What? I called out her name again, this time with urgency. Sam! Sam, please! Felt like a drop of water that soon poured out like a flood. <laughs> and she put her tongue on my most sensitive place. It was warm and soft, delicate but deliberate. It was a feeling I never felt before. Michelle. I heard her whisper to me. I love you. She said it quietly, but I heard her clearly. 
I wanted her love. I wanted all that she had to give. I wanted to answer her. My mind turned blank. I was going to be carried away by the waves. I was going to scream. Sam! Whatever will be, will be. Until the sun rises. I woke up in Sam's room. It was a warm summer morning. A small metal fan was oscillating back and forth, blowing balmy air onto our sweaty bodies. I must have laid awake for an hour on Sam's bed. Sam's arms were languidly wrapped around me. Her long hair was tangled with my hair, and her legs were crossed with mine. I felt her slow breaths on my neck. She must be sound asleep. I tried to remain as still as possible so as not to disturb her slumber. I listened to the sounds of the morning. It was quiet outside. I couldn't make out any noises or voices from neighboring apartments or from the street below. People seemed slow to get up this morning. I was left alone with the clarity of my own thoughts all the while Sam softly slept. It was dim inside Sam's room. As time passed by, the light of the sun eventually passed through the buildings unobstructed and penetrated through the apartment bedroom window. The morning light was not gentle. I felt Sam stirring from her sleep. Once she wakes, I would have to take my leave. Michelle? Michelle? Hmm? Michelle, I like you. I felt her embrace around me tighten. My chest felt pained. I had to fight back tears. I should not feel like this. I had to be stern for my own sake. What happened last night? It was a one-time thing. I knew in my heart that anything more between us was impossible. I already told Sam. She should know this too. Sam brushed back my hair. Her eyes met with mine. I could not let it be more than this. I had to push her away. Sam, I have to go. Michelle? Please, Michelle. Please stay. We can spend the day together. Don't be quiet like this. Talk to me. I... I can't be like this with you. Sam, I just can't. Michelle. Please, Sam. Any more than this, we just can't. Michelle. I'm going to get dressed. I got out of her bed. I picked up my clothes that had been discarded in haste the night prior. I kept my back towards Sam. I didn't want her to see my expression. Whatever she was thinking, I did not want to know either. I didn't know what had gotten over me last night. I'd never done such a thing with anyone. And I never thought I'd be a person who would. I had always been a reserved and self-controlled person. I would always do my tasks accurately and diligently. No matter how tired I was, I would finish whatever task that was expected of me. I wasn't someone who would let myself be consumed by passion. I smoothed out my shirt before putting it on. It had been tangled with Sam's denim jacket that laid on the floor. In the right mind, I would never discard even a worn sock on the floor and let it get dirty. Why did I do such a thing with Sam? An answer floated up from my subconscious and lingered in my mind. I dared not to even have the thought be uttered. 
I was frightened by myself. I did something wrong. I did something shameful. I had to face my own wrongdoing and go. There was no possibility of anything working out between us beyond this one night. Sam had her thoughts and her own feelings. She lived her life the way she wanted to. And I had my own life to live as well. If I get caught up in her life any more than this, we would just hurt each other more. I wasn't compatible with her lifestyle. And she wasn't compatible with mine. There was no way out of this other than for me to leave. I put on my shoes. I was about to take my leave. Sam stood at the door. I tried not to look into her eyes. I have to go back home now. Can I walk you out? Sam, it's okay. I can see myself out. Michelle? Sam, last night, it was something I didn't expect to happen. Michelle? I can't. I really can't. It can't be more than this. Michelle, talk about it a bit more? Sam, just talking with you, I can't. Please don't ask anything more than this. It's... It's impossible between us. I'm sorry, Sam. I'll be going now. I took the flight of stairs out of the apartment building. Every step I took created a loud echo of my footsteps. It was as if the narrow stairwell was amplifying my shame to the entire building. I didn't like it, but I preferred this over being alone in the elevator. I couldn't stand still in an enclosed place and be left with my thoughts. I needed to keep moving. I stepped out onto the street. I wanted to get lost in the crowd, but I was alone on the street. It was exceptionally humid outside. Mong Kok on a cloudy day looked so unfamiliar. Without the neon lights or the bright sunlight to create contrasts of color, the gray concrete building seemed all too glum and empty. I suppose it was still early on a Sunday. The crowds were not yet out. Sunday. It was a day with its own certain melancholy. Neither like Monday nor Saturday. Sunday was a bookend to the workweek hustle, but it was also the uncomfortable beginning of the next. I didn't like Sundays. I didn't like things that were halfway between something else. I stood on the side of the street and waited for a taxi. I was getting antsy. It seemed like an eternity while I waited. I felt a sprinkle of water from something above. I looked up. The gray sky seemed all too low and heavy above me. It was suffocating. It felt out of place to be alone on a street so quiet like this. It was as if I had stepped out into a world that I no longer recognized. And I saw it in a shimmering flash of light. A white dragon appeared. His long body snaked through the dark clouds like ripples in the sky. He roared and fired his hot breath down from the heavens. I saw a taxi come my way. I better hurry home before I'm caught in a thunderstorm. I returned home in the afternoon. My shoes were scratched and dirtied. I had come home looking like a mess. I had once again left my blouse with Sam. I had forgotten to grab it on my way out. But this time I had to treat it as a loss. There was no way I could go see her again. Mother? There was no answer. My mother appeared to be out. I felt relieved. I wanted to change and wash up before seeing her. On Sundays, she would usually attend church and then have tea with my extended family. 
I figured she might have gone out without me. I glanced around the kitchen. I noticed there had been food poured down the sink. My mother, she had waited for me to come home last night. How long did she wait before she realized I wasn't going to come home for dinner? I had lied to her yesterday. I had lied to her the other night before. I didn't come home last night when I said I would be home early. I promised to have dinner with her, but I broke my promise. I had done a terrible thing. That's a... Uh... I'm the mom? Off. Oh, no, it was done Mr. tonight. Oh, okay. You're my mom tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh... 